Good morning. It's finally time to start a new project. I've been anxious and chopping at the bit to get this one going. I'm going to be doing a walleye or starting a walleye today. Um, it's been a while and I apologize for not keeping these videos going, but uh, Memorial Day weekend, I had a lot of work to do around here. I had to work at my regular job. Uh, we've had company, so I just really hadn't had a lot of time to get started, but I'm going to today, finally. Um, and before I start that, um, I have a couple quick little projects that I'm going to show you. One is, I, I, you've heard me, if you've watched any of my other videos, you've probably heard me moan and groan and, com and complain about not having a big enough bandsaw. Well, I finally bought me a bigger bandsaw, and I bought it from a friend of mine. Uh, gave him 100 bucks for it. It's 14-inch uh, uh, Chicago machinery. It's a Harbor Freight brand, but uh, it's in real good shape. Uh, just needed a new belt on it, which I got, and uh, but it's going to be plenty big enough to do uh, my projects, I think, um, or at least most of them. Um, I also bought a uh, four by thirty-six belt sander. Uh, I've been needing that for a while. If you've seen me before, you've seen me using a regular little twelve-inch belt sander upside down on the workbench. It works. Uh, with this uh, 4x36, I'll do make it a little bit easier. And I bought it. It's a Chicago machinery. I bought it at Harbor Freight uh, uh, Labor Day. Uh, they, they was having a sale on them. And uh, I had a, they, they sent me a 25% off coupon. So the, I think it was normally like a $74, $75 uh, sander through them. Uh, but they had it on sale. And the guy let me use my 25% off coupon for it. So I ended up getting it for like $54. So it's a pretty good deal. Um, but I'm going to set that up also. I'm not going to do an unboxing review. I'm just going to do a little time lapse of setting it up just to kind of fill up this little spot here. And, uh, and then I'm going to get started laying out this walleye. I've got my patterns drawn for it. And uh, I do need... To set this sander up first because the piece of tupelo I have left uh, that I'm going to do it on it's going to be a small I'm going to start off small on this project because I since I've never done a walleye before I don't want to attempt something big uh, so I'm going to do a small one uh, it's about he'll be 14 inches or so so um, but I the piece of tupelo I have left is uh, it's kind of rough so the sander is going to help me kind of smooth it off and so I can draw out the uh, the pattern on it. Uh, and I'll show you the pattern and all that when I get started. But anyway, stick with me and I'm gonna get the camera reach it's weighted and get started. All right, so this belt sand, this is the belt sander I bought from Harbor Freight this uh, Memorial Day weekend. They were having a big sale and they were sending out uh, coupons. So I had a 25% off coupon. I was able to use that on this. So I think these are normally about uh, $74, I think. And I was able to get it for around uh, fifty-four dollars, I think, after taxes. Ever after taxes, so. Um, but the reviews I read on it weren't just glowing reviews, and I think the ones that that gave it the worst marks were uh, guys that had professional woodworking shops where they really hammer these things and uh, and and do a lot of work on them. Um, I saw good reviews on it from people that are using it for hobbyist type work, which is what I'm going to be doing. So I think it's going to be fine. And uh, so I'm going to set it up here and because I'm going to be using it in a minute on this uh, walleye project. And uh, so we'll get started. Instructions don't need those. All right, all we got to do is put this on there. This little backstop piece here. that 
The only thing I don't like about it is that you have to take this cover and everything off to change the belts. Um, so if I had this, if I had one negative to say about it, that was it. A lot of the reviews I saw said it was complaining about the belt coming from the factory. The belt was uh, loose and it would it would stall out the motor. Um, I checked it and on this one it's pretty tight so this is a piece of wood I'm going to use so I need to smooth this out that was a rough cut with a chainsaw because I need to draw out the pattern so that's going to be perfect for this so let's see what it does I think it's gonna be fine uh, no more than I'm gonna be using it for uh, let's round off some corners here is going to work fine for me for what I'm going to be using it for so um, if you want something I would say if you're looking for something to do, do a general just general duty work general duty sanding and, and you're not going to be just running this thing eight hours a day seven days a week I think it's going to be fine so we'll see how it holds up I didn't put the uh it's got a little dust collection port on it that goes on the side. I'm not going to worry about all that. Uh, I'm not going to hook up the dust collection to it. So I'm just going to breathe it in. <laughs> uh, and I know I should be wearing a mask on this. And I've actually uh, thought about ordering me a... a decent respirator style mask uh, when I'm doing these projects so because uh, I know it's not good for me but anyway I'm gonna get uh, set up and draw the pattern out on this and then cut it out on the bandsaw and I'll show you my new bandsaw in a minute so. okay so uh, I've got my piece of Tupelo here uh, it's roughly 14 inches and my pattern is roughly 14 inches. I should have made it just a tad bit smaller because I want to leave the tail on. So I'm going to have to modify the pattern a little bit to fit this so I have room on the ends to carve. And, and that's not that big a deal. So all I have to do is scooch it down just a little bit and then it'll be fine, thin it out. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out here and then draw it out, trace that on a piece of wood. And then, uh, then we'll take it in on the bandsaw on my new bandsaw and uh, and cut it out so uh, let me get started on that i've got two patterns here just in case i mess one up then i have the original and then i also have some uh some color versions of it just to kind of help me for reference and this will be the top pattern uh, that i'll cut out and put on there also so let me start that oh let me show you this this will be my next project. Um, I'm going to make a whole bunch of these shad uh, just for habitat pieces. Uh, like, like I'll have this uh, walleye chasing a couple shad. And I'm going to make a bunch of them at once. I mean, I'll show you. I'll do a video on making one. And then... Um, but I'm gonna make a bunch of them so I'll have them for like uh, my next project. Uh, 
it's probably going to be a another largemouth bass uh, that'll be chasing several shad. So, uh, but so I'm going to at project after I get done with the walleye, I'm going to start a project on cutting the, and making these guys out. So, walleye here. Just barely. All right, so I got the side pattern on and then the top view. So uh, let me go get set up on the bandsaw and we'll get this cut out. So I got the bandsaw set up in here. Um, this is a central machinery also, a Harbor Freight brand. I think these are new, they're around $400, maybe a little more new at Harbor Freight. And you have to put them together. I mean, from the base, the saw, the motor, everything has to be attached and put together. And a friend of mine at work had this that uh, actually belonged to his dad and he was getting rid of it for him. And I saw it in the back of his truck and I said, hey, what are you gonna do with that? <laughs> he said, I'm selling it, how much? So anyway, I bought it uh, for a hundred bucks and uh, it's in great shape. It's all put together. I had to mess with putting it together. And they had even went so far. So one of the gripes that I've seen online about these is there's not any bearings on the blade guide down here they're just these carbon blocks which again i'm not going to be using this thing eight hours a day in a production type manner so this is going to be fine uh, one thing they also they had problems with on these was the tires i already took the covers off here was the tires on the wheels that was uh slipping that would slip around the on the wheel when he when he turned it on or when he was working with it so what he done is he went and bought a uh, set of new tires for it and put them on there so that's another that was like a twenty dollar deal another thing i don't have to worry about or have to mess with so uh, but i've had it on and used it a few times just to playing around with it and it works great um, I think it's going to do me fine here. It's got a six inch, it's not quite six inches. It says six inches, but it's only like five and three quarters um, cutting height, which is fine. I'm very seldom I'm, am I going to need to cut anything over over five and a half, six inches. So, and if I do, um, I'll set it up to where I can uh, use a sawzall or something to cut it off. But for the most part, most of my stuff is going to be four or five inches wide and six inches tall at the most. And if I do anything bigger than that, it's going to, I'll just do it the old way. But anyway, um, let me get turned around here and I'm going to get this cut out. And oh, another thing I did was he gave me a handful of, I mean, he gave me four, four blades for it. Um, Two of them are just a general ripping blade or resaw blade. They're wide. They're like half inch wide, which is not, you can't really use it on cutting out shapes. So I bought a thinner, it's a little quarter inch blade here. Uh, that way I can get around curves and, and, uh, and tight corners. So anyway, let me get this reset here and I'll cut this out.
So this is the first fish that I've actually cut out with this saw. So again, this is the first that you're gonna see that I've done. So I'm just, I'm gonna show you and, I, and if I mess up, you'll see that too. Put these back on ideally I would uh, ideally I would hot glue them back on but since I don't have any hot glue I'm just gonna tape them on and then I'll cut out the top pattern so let me get the, some tape and You say normally you would just we just hot glue that and then uh, and then cut it out. So, but since I don't have any hot glue, we're going with tape. There's my blank. So do you know how many hours I just saved myself? I know if you've watched any of my other videos, a lot of this was done by just grinding with um, with a belt grinder or angle grinder, getting it getting that rough shape. But I just done that in what three minutes, four minutes, five minutes maybe. So that's going to save me a lot of time. Um, Overall, I think it's going to be great tool. I finally got one, so I'm going to get set up on the porch and uh, start rounding this off and getting it to the uh, shape of the walleye. All right, I'm set up on my porch now and uh, I'm going to start taking down, chamfering down the edges and corners and getting it into a rougher shape rounded shape of the fish so um, and if you notice I was able to leave the tail on and uh, I left it thick and I'll carve it down as I get closer to that point um, I left the bottom jaw a little thicker because there's a tongue in place so instead of trying to cut that tongue out on the bandsaw I just left it thick here and I'll cut it out as I, as I get down to that point so but um, I'm just going to start off with my rough cuts all bit and then I'll probably end up with a I've got a finer one here and then and then probably a drum sander a drum sander to get it down smoother so but I'm gonna get the camera turned around and get started on this like I say I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this rough extra coarse cut saw here to bring this the edges down and uh, just start shaping it 
and uh, it'll it'll be a rough shape today, and then I'll follow up probably in part two, doing uh, refining that shape and adding gills to, gill detail into it. So and also, um, you have to excuse the fan noise because it's getting close to summer and it's hot out here, <laughs> and plus the mosquitoes are bad, so this keeps mosquitoes off my legs and keeps me a little cool. So, but I apologize for the noise. Um, hopefully, here sometime soon, I'll uh, get my little shop out here situated and run some electricity to it and insulate it and put me a heat and air unit in it and start um, sitting inside, doing it inside, have me a proper little shop. But anyway, so I'm going to get started here. Walleye are a little more cylindrical shape, bullet shape, than a like a bass or a crappie. So I got to be careful. I need to think about that as I go. Um, so I'm just going to get, like I say, I'm just going to get a rough shape down. And then once I get the rough shape down, then I'll start refining it down to that little bullet shape. Switching over to this finer bit here now is all. I'm going to bring the shape down just a little bit more. Then I'll switch over to a sander and kind of sand it a little bit. A little hard spot through there. One hard spot here. The grain is going this way, but there must have been a limb or something or a branch coming off here. Because there's a hard spot running across the grain here. I don't know if you can see that or not. But the grain is running this way, but that hard spot's running that way. That's there's always a trouble area on this wood. 
There's always a spot that gives you trouble. Okay, that's going to do it for part one and I've got the body down pretty close to where I want it. Um, I got here quicker than I felt like I usually do but then I realized it was the bandsaw. <laughs> uh, the bandsaw took away two to three hours of grinding with an angle grinder and the belt sander, the small belt sander to get to this point. Uh, to get to the point with the four of them uh, taking it down. So, but anyway, so part two, I'm going to be working on uh, the gill detail and more of the head detail. And at some point, I'll cut the bottom jaw off or the top part of the head off to do the inside of the mouth. But that's going to be a couple videos down the line. Uh, but if you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you like the videos, please give me a thumbs up if you would. And uh, as always, I appreciate the comments and suggestions you may have. So uh, any questions, leave them for me in the comment section below, and I'll answer them as quick as I can. Uh, but I appreciate y'all watching, and I will see you on part two.